We are standing next to Calvillo Hall. The bit of the building that you see behind me is the most modern addition that the Calvillo family added to the building. The Calvillo family were residents here for hundreds of years. This was the manor of the village. This was the most important uh, building in the village, ap uh, apart from the church, obviously. Shortly after this lodging block was built, the Calvary family moved away from the property. And after that, it was no longer lived in by a great family. It sort of changed and evolved over time. And in more recent years, was lived in by up to as many as 30 residents, we believe, um, as the building was divided into lots of different cottages. So the Landmark Trust took the building on in the early 1980s. This lodging block has been a landmark since then, but unfortunately the rest of the site we were never able to fully restore as we'd wanted to when we first took on the building. Um, and it has sort of sadly been gathering dust over the last few decades to the point where now we really want to be able to you know, bring this medieval site back to some of its former glory, uh, find some new uses for parts of the building, and really bring it back into being somewhere that's important for the, for the village and important historically for the wider area. I like to feel I know the region quite well, and I like to feel that I know the important medieval buildings across the country, nationally. And do you know what? I've had no notion, actually, that this was here until I got involved in it. Colverley has been a very, very challenging building to look at and uh, that's because it has some features which are uh, best described as near unique in this part of the country and indeed uh, the timber frame solar block is almost a unique survivor nationally, so an exceptionally significant and important building. The community around the hall has grown up around it over the years. So what once were kind of the lovely sort of manorial fields are no longer evident in the landscape. But nevertheless, the building stands here sort of testimony to, to what this area once meant. Even though we've got traffic rumbling past us, it's not that difficult to imagine Calvary standing in beautiful countryside, um, uh, sort of surrounded by orchards and fish ponds. This is a rather unusual and unique set of circumstances. We've got a very fine, um, unusual example of a medieval manorial site. Many of the structures surviving from that period sat in amongst this community. And I think it'd be very exciting to try and draw those two strands together to see if they, that mutual existence uh, is something that they can both benefit from. This building has been stood empty for nigh on 40 years and we've been searching for a way to, to bring it back to life again in that time and we've had various schemes designed but none of them quite worked. We're now at a point where we think we've got a vision for the future of this building which is to convert it into a landmark for 10 people, provide some engagement facility for the community and a small rented flat which a local resident can, can apply to live in. The design for the landmark will take in the principal um, historic spaces of the building. So we're talking about the solar, which you can see here, the hall next door, and the chapel, the chamber block, um, which were the were the first in order of development to be on the site and those areas of most historical interest. So the reason we're here this week is to begin that process of restoration and conservation and that always begins with a really, really thorough process of building recording. So that means that we want to make a document of every single inch of the building as it is now in its derelict state. And that might seem like a really odd thing to do because it really is sort of semi-derelict inside and round the outside of the building we've got broken windows that have been boarded up. Um, but you know, for lots of reasons, uh, you have to capture the state that it's in now. 
one of those reasons is for the historical record so that you know we we have a have a photograph or, or have a series of documents that represent this point in time the other reason is that in order for our project team in order for our design team the architects um, the structural engineers to make the right decisions about what we do with the building we really do need to find out everything as much as we can about it at this point in time so that we can cost out the project properly so that we can come up with the right design so that there are no sort of nasty surprises you know two years down the line when our contractors are on site that suddenly throws everybody off course so that's an absolutely critical um, point that we're at at the minute.